Welcome to Space Day here at WP. We're having a blast learning about all space this special day, and we're so fortunate to be joined by astronaut and Dr. Guyon Guy Bluford. Welcome. 38 years ago, Guy Bluford became the first African-American astronaut to go to space as a member of the crew aboard the space shuttle Challenger. He has been up in space four times in all. And get this, he first went to college at Penn State in aerospace engineering, and then went on to get other advanced degrees in this field. He worked at NASA for 13 years and logged more than 688 hours in space. But he's also a hero to us because he's a retired colonel in the US Air Force and a Vietnam War veteran who flew 144 combat missions and helped our country. So welcome, welcome, Guy. We, we thank, have, thank you. Yeah. We, have be, lot, okay. we have lots of questions for you coming from some of our young space cadets. So let's get underway. Guy, you describe yourself as a techie. So can you explain what this means to fellow techie students and kids who are watching today? Well, I, I, I think it's, uh, the description is right. I'm a techie. I like uh, math and science and computers and robotics, anything that uh, is mechanical and, mecha and mathematical. So yeah, I'm a techie and uh, I get a lot of uh, thrill out of uh, doing techie stuff. Sounds wonderful. So I'm gonna ask the questions that some of our third graders in central Pennsylvania wrote into me and asked me to ask you. What's life like in science? I read that you were giggling and laughing when the ground control talked to you and your fellow astronauts one time when you were up in space. Is that true? <laughs> well, it's not, it's not really that true. I enjoyed the ride up. I remember uh, riding up on the shuttle for the first time and I realized how much I enjoyed it. And I remember uh, they, uh, copy they uh, found out that I was giggling as I was riding up but that's about as much that I was doing because I was very I had to help the pilot and commander but I could tell that I enjoyed the, the ride up and you can tell that I was giggling a little bit as I was riding up. Did you have to wear the same clothes every day? No I changed clothes every day we had uh uh, changes of clothes on orbit. When you get on orbit, you take off your spacesuit. And at that point, you take, uh, put on a pair of shirt, you put on a shirt and some trousers. You take off your shoes because you go around in house shoes and you change your clothes every day. So we have a change of clothes every day. Again, these are coming from, from pretty astute future scientists and maybe space explorers who need to know. How about the bathroom detail? Can you tell us how it works out and how you were able to shower when you were up in space? Well, the bathroom was very interesting. Uh, the toilet uh, was very similar to a toilet on an airplane, but it had, uh, instead of water, it sucked things down with air. So anytime you use it, you have everything being sucked down with air. So that worked out very fine. We did not have a shower on board, so we had to sponge bathe. So I had a little squirt gum. I would squirt water into a cloth, put soap on the cloth, and wash myself that way. So that's how we did it on uh, in space. And one of the things that I was anxious to do when I got back was to take a shower. I remember landing and wanting to take a shower, but we can't take a shower on orbit, we take a sponge bath. Okay, now let's ask you, when you were thinking about being an astronaut, some of the kids wanted to know, what was your first idea and how did you think, I'm gonna be up there someday? Was it, was it one vision, was it one class, was it one teacher, how did that work? Well, I was very interested in airplanes when I was growing up. I made lots of model airplanes and I read books on airplanes. And by the time I got into high school, I knew I wanted to work with airplanes and I liked math and science. So I knew I wanted to be an aerospace engineer and that was why I went to Penn State. 
So when I got to Penn State, I found out that I could fly airplanes through ROTC. And so that's how I got into the Air Force. And then that was it. But my interest in flying in space generated from the fact that I liked airplanes and how they fly and all of that sort of stuff. And because of that, my interest <clears throat> generated into space, and then I got interested in flying in space. But my initial interest was flying and learning about airplanes. Wonderful. Now, you took a lot of classes and you studied hard, and to be an astronaut takes a lot of work. But as you were heading up there and when you were up there, tell us what it was like for boys and girls watching and listening to this. Well, we rocketed up on the uh, shuttle. It takes you about eight and a half minutes to get on orbit, and you go from zero velocity to almost 18,000 miles an hour in about eight and a half minutes. So it's really an exciting ride up. On orbit, you go around the Earth every 90 minutes. So you see uh, daylight for 45 minutes and night for 45 minutes. The view out the window is spectacular. You can you have great big windows. You can see in every direction, a uh, thousand miles. So you can see all over the place. And then the zero G being able to stand on the walls and ceilings and floating around. So to me, the most exciting things about being on orbit are the view out the window and the zero G. That's wonderful. And do you have a different idea of what it's like to live on Earth now that you've seen it from a whole different vantage point? I think so. Uh, when you are in space, you're marveled at the Earth that you fly around. You realize the planet is really very small, surprisingly enough, because you go around the Earth every 90 minutes. And then when you look down at the Earth, you cannot see the various countries. Everything is melded together. So it just looks like a National Geographic map. So you learn to appreciate the fact that we all have to share this one planet together. 7.7 7 billion of us all live on this one rock together. We all, got a, we all have to get along together and we all have to share this one block together. So you become more appreciative of uh, the earth that you're on by flying in space. Wonderful. Now you went up in space a number of years ago, almost 40 years. And today, right now in this area, we've got the amazing NASA's Mars helicopter, Ingenuity, flying above the surface of Mars that was delivered by Perseverance. Boy, has NASA really come a long way. What do you think about all the things that are happening today with exploration? Wow, a helicopter on Mars. Can you imagine that? That's exciting. I can't even believe that. But, uh, you know, it's an indica indication that we will eventually have people on Mars. So we're slowly but surely inching our way out. I know we're going to send people back to the moon, you know, so that's going to occur pretty soon. And then we will eventually go out to Mars. So I think... Um, you see all of that developing, and it's going to be real exciting in the years to come. So it's, a, it's exciting to see the helicopter on Mars. It's unbelievable. And Guy, if you're a kid who's watching and listening right now who wants to be an astronaut, what should they do? What advice would you give them? Well, you have to work hard. You have to do well in school. So that's very important. And then you have to do something in the science and math and computers and that sort of thing. You have to be a techie. You have to be a techie so that you are very comfortable in science and math because astronauts have to do a lot of science and math stuff. So I would concentrate on that. I would concentrate on doing something that I really enjoy doing in the science and math field. So I would try and do that. And then uh, learn much as much about flying in space as you can meet astronauts when you can, uh, and then uh, work hard, you know, take good care of yourself, and hopefully, you know, try to apply and get into the astronaut program. But it is an exciting job, and uh, it's well worth trying to, uh, trying to get in. 
That's wonderful. And my last question is, what types of jobs for boys and girls watching today are there beyond being an astronaut, but still kind of out of this world kind of jobs to help the astronauts and help NASA and help with space exploration? There's, there's a couple other things folks can do, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there are. Uh, I'm an aerospace engineer, and I take a great deal of pride in being an aerospace engineer. And uh, so that was how I got into the astronaut business, and that's where I went after I left the astronaut business. But if you take a look at the astronauts, there are astronomers, uh, there are medical people. All of these people have all shown, uh, gotten into the astronaut business because they've, uh, they've, they've done their thing in other fields. So I said, being a doctor, being an engineer, being an astronaut, being a computer scientist, all of these things are are stepping stones to being an astronaut. And uh, I would definitely try to pursue one of them if I wanted to be an astronaut. All right. Guy Bluford, thank you so much for helping us with space here at WPSU. Perhaps you are talking to a future fellow astronaut out there or one or two in central and north central Pennsylvania. We thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Good, to, good talking to you.